say that um, you spent um, over two decades in the brand industry, and um, I mean, your success is not only notable, it's quite obvious to everybody. And um, of course, not only within Nigeria, beyond Nigeria, and all that. And um, what would you say is the relevance of um, branding in today's economy? Hmm. And why is branding so important? Because without brand, you cannot differentiate. And there are too many other brands out there competing for attention of the consumers. Okay. So branding is the most relevant tool for differentiation and consistency in terms of projecting not just individual brands, but nation states and their assets. So now you have different destinations. We have Egypt fighting for attention. We have Kenya. We have, I don't know. OK, Nigeria is struggling, trying to struggle to uh, fight for attention. But with all the negativism going on right now, now let me just give you a case study. Rwanda is a case study of a country that has been able to curtail their stuff and then push all the positivism, good governance. But you see, we have a case study of let's compare Nigeria and Rwanda, or Nigeria and Kenya, or Nigeria and any other country in Africa. If you do not brand and project the positivism, you will really get negativism, and you must control your narrative. It's all part of branding. So branding creates brands, puts in place strategies that ensures that there's consistency in your brand behavior, your brand thought, from the brand thought to the behavior and then execution. But the most important aspect of branding is the consistency of your thought and the processes. Okay. Um, let's talk about personal branding. Mm. I guess it's also of course. Of mm. over discussion. Uh, do you think that concept has been misunderstood? No, no, no. Because I've, over the last two years, I've done uh, what I call the C-suite um, personal branding sessions with over 150 top CEOs in Nigeria. I don't broadcast it because it's, it's supposed to be personal. Now, personal branding is such that um, a lot of people that we need to know already are aware, but it's not misunderstood. Rather, a lot of people don't know the importance of personal branding. Now, if you're branded personally, it affects your corporate brand positively. Because what you gain is you have clarity of thought, you have clarity of purpose, you have the focus, and then the best part of it is you also have a, what we call the, 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 um, the, brand, the brand plan, which helps you to navigate different issues that come up over the time, and then based on experiences, you know how to navigate those processes. Personal brand is crucial, but a lot of people do not understand the importance not misunderstood because they don't know how relevant it is. So there needs to be more awareness about it. But it's increasing. A lot of brands are coming in and are requesting and insisting. We want to have a session. So I have a lot of private sessions on that based on the Chastutor Personal Brand Guide for the one and two, which was outsold, I mean, within two, week, two months online. So it's, 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 a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a it's a topic and a team that is coming up. but not well appreciated yet. Okay. So how have you been able to sustain your own brand? Mm -hmm. Well, it's been on for decades now. But what are, what, what are the things you've been able to do to keep your brand staying relevant? Consistently improving my knowledge base, okay. consistently being hungry for knowledge, being hungry for new things in terms of the, um, innovation. And then the best part is invention, reinventing the brand, staying relevant, and then most importantly, being careful with the issues I'm involved in and the issues I don't need to get myself involved in. I have my personal views on a lot of things, but you don't, I don't air them out in public. A lot of people do not understand that your personal views affect your personal brand. Social media is dangerous. Whatever you put out there will come back and haunt you later. Not everything that's permissible is applicable. And not everything that's applicable is permissible. So that's where personal branding comes to bear. So what I've learned over the years has kept me in the market is, one, keep on improving, but be innovative, innovate and invent and reinvent in the wheel. And then stay relevant by being ahead of the game. And it only takes one thing, constant knowledge. Read, 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 read. There's a saying that a man that invests his course in his brain, never before. If you invest your account on your brain, you can't be poor because it comes back and it gives you back. You buy a car, it depreciates. You buy a house without intending to depreciate. But knowledge keeps on appreciating because it's a give back. You invest it and it gives you more than you can 
Yeah, yeah. Bye bye, Maji. So what would you call your own major accomplishments? If you look back at what you wanted to do. I don't like to look back because yesterday is gone. I mean, today I was just showing my people all the awards. I even have a bag of them, the City Builder Awards, this award, all these awards. Accomplishments are generic one and it's tied to time. The, I'd rather answer that question this way. Major accomplishments ahead of me. Whatever we've achieved in the past be, will become irrelevant to what about to happen this year. And I'm not predicting. It's based on what we have signed on already, not predicting. A year ago, I, I said, I, I mentioned it that the future of branding is less, is about being less. Less is more. People stop investing in advertising because oh, and they would rather buy products that will satisfy multiple needs than buying one product to satisfy this, this, this. That's where Apple comes in. Now, so I'd rather say that if my biggest achievement is maintaining a brand that's been consistent, working with top profile clients without any hitches, but the best part is remaining true to myself. So I don't want to talk about the business part because that's not an achievement. It's already gone. So the years ahead of us, the best, biggest achievement is ahead of me. <laughs> it's just ahead, just by the corner. And it's a milestone. <laughs> Every June 20th, uh, of course, it's your birthday. Mm -hmm. Are you gonna come any of them? Yeah. <laughs> We're watching this year. Okay. You know, usually you organize a personal brand masterclass. Mm -hmm. And I'm wondering what's up for this year. What are you mm. planning for? Do you know, it's just around the corner. Um okay, first of all, let me talk about the history, the why it came in between. I I sat down one day and I asked wow. myself, you've gained so much. I've had mentors that are ah, they'll just lift me up and give me sound talks. Larry Ogulesi, my daddy, and um, there are many of them, Captain. There are so many people, you know, John Obaiwada, free advice, you know. Um, MD of Leatherwall, Benny of Baze. These are people that became clients, but at the same time, they had an interest in improving me. So you do a great job, so you're invited personally to come and have a meeting over dinner, and they start advising you free. I said, but why? Why me now? Okay, so... Based on what I've gone through in the past, I said, it's time to give back. So any other person will have a party. It's normal to throw a party on your birthday. I said, instead, let me throw a party for entrepreneurs. So I'll give back free knowledge. And so this year, so that's the beginning. So we've done it three times. The first two, two editions were done in Ikeja. Last year, we went to the Glitz Event Center in Nuru. So this year, we are planning something a bit different. Um, <laughs> Rwanda hosts us this year. We're going to, it's going to host simultaneously in Rwanda, Kigali, Rwanda, and Lagos simultaneously at the same time. <laughs> <laughs> I know you. How do you intend to do it? Yeah. If I tell you how, how that, that's uh, we're letting the cut out of the bag, but it's going to host simultaneously Kigali, Rwanda, Lagos, Nigeria, and already we all our sponsors from last year's own are interested in being part of this one, and then there are also new people. Don't forget, I can't do it on my own, so I always get sponsors that always put down and um, funds for it, and then we use that to utilize it well in terms of visibility, and then ensure that. And oh, for this time, for this first time, every year I have co-speakers. The first one I had, I was the first speaker. Second one I had co-speakers. Last year I was I had co-speakers Udo Konjo or Alakwe Sorio, but this year, one man, one stage. One message, and the team is brand immersion. Brand immersion. Okay. Immersing yourself into a brand. Last year was spiritual branding. It's an it's a second phase of spiritual branding. When you get spiritual branded, you immerse yourself in the brand. You leave the brand out. You become an advocate of the brand. Lately, you've been traveling to Rwanda, uh -huh. uh, and I know that um, recently you have got a conference there. Mm. Um, and there are plans to expand to Rwanda. Rwanda is a very stable economy, and we are looking at using Rwanda as a, a platform, a platform to enter the East African market. Yes, we have plans for Rwanda. Uh, we are interested in opening up a base there, because that's a virgin market, and uh, based on our research, and uh, my experience is speaking at the African Leadership University, and then having meetings with business leaders, 
um, is a market that requires our expertise. But beyond Rwanda, we're looking at the, the whole East African market, the axis. So Rwanda will become our base for the East African market. Yes, we have a plan to do stuff in Rwanda this year, hopefully before June, okay. before the event. Okay. And the first time you visited Rwanda, what were the things that you did? Make of what you saw on the computer. Okay, the, the first time I went to Rwanda was on the on behalf of African Movie Academy Awards, okay. the AMA. Part of our strategy was uh, inform was recommending Rwanda to host the event. So we went. I went ahead to look at the country. Two things I took away: um, security of lives and property, hundred um, percent. Electricity, power, constant. Let me give you an instance. My last trip, I did not stay in a hotel. The first trip I went, I stayed in a hotel, Marriott. This one, I stayed in a bungalow, three bedroom bungalow, fully furnished, gardens, everything else, about $200 for seven days. They didn't take the light off. That, not, you know, like you said, pain. It didn't go off. Now, down the road is the presidential palace, American embassy. You can just walk down. By 3 a.m., you can jog freely, walk to your house. People don't lock their cars. You can leave your phone and your laptop in the candle, but it steals it. It's a different culture, it's an, and it's Africa's future because there's leadership, and it's driven by a leader that leaves out his, his, his promises. So he speaks it, he does it. So my experience there was Blizz. There is a word that's called Blizz. It's a place you can build and, be, and sustain and government policies will not in, hamper you from progressing. Security of lives and property, consistency in their policies, and then the best part, constant energy, power supply. Yeah. Amazing country. Let's talk about Nigeria. Yes. If Nigeria was to be a product, mm. um, will you purchase it? As of today? Yes. Sir. I would not. Why? It's a failed brand. I love this country. I've invested 48 years of my life here. I've, I've been successful here. But this country needs help. And it starts with the leadership. We have very poor leadership. Directional issues. We are just motionlessly moving. We're like a rocking chair. We flip-flop. There's no consistency in policy. I give it to the president. He's trying. But I think that there's more than trying. You must put in place a policy and then you physically and mentally ensure your policies are implemented. And it's affecting every sector of the economy, affecting lives of Nigerians. And then security issues is becoming horrible. Despite the investment in security and everything else, I mean, the, the North East and everything else is becoming an, a major issue. If you cannot secure the lives of your people, then, I mean, what's the basis? We've now it's having this tough. It's tough. The economy is people are groaning. There's no power and energy, there's no security. And then one governor wakes up and bans the same companies he gave license they gave licenses to in one day. Flip flops and policies. You can't see this happening anywhere else in the world. And we spend too much time in churches praying to God. You come out and then you do. the Chinese are not religious. The Japanese are not religious. They're the most Technologically driven economies, they're not poor. So let's focus on what is important. For me, Nigeria is a, is, a, is a product, not a brand. You want to be a brand, focus on the essentials. Focus on the, the processes that ensures certain um, sub-teams sub are eff effectively affected to ensure that lives and property protected. Investment protected, policies consistent. So it's a product, not a brand yet. Several organizations are focusing on their efforts uh, on improving their corporate brands. Mm. Some are getting it right, some are not getting it right. Um, what do you say will influence the future of branding in Nigeria and beyond? Uh, like I said some time ago, I, I there will be less. In, most of these brands need to understand that it starts with focusing on building the internal, the internal. The, the internal starts with the people, the people themselves. Okay. 
So most corporate brands focus on building brands from the external, not the internal. The people make the brand. So you invest more in the people and the systems and the structures and the processes that ensure success long term. Invest less in promotions. So for instance, you, you spend 250 million telling us you are this. I go to your ATM, it doesn't function. There's a particular bank for the past three, five days, this system is down. I have an account there, I have money, I can't draw it. You go to the banking hall, it's not working. System is down. You go online, system is down. <laughs> Do you get my point? So that's and that case, case study. What does it cost to put in place the right processes that ensures success? You say start, dial star, so something, 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 you can zero one week after. So it doesn't, it's not space rocket science. Invest in the right structures, processes. So most corporate brands should invest more in the processes and the people rather than the advertising. So it, less is more. So focus on the things that are important to make the customer experience a delight, not the noise on the outside. Besides, you guys' targets are already getting out of too much noise. You wake up in the morning, you want to read the Bible, you see adverts scrolling. It distracts you from reading the Bible because it's, it's obtrusive. So the future is in investing less in the noise and investing in the process. That's where I see this whole thing going on. It's about the brand experience. Let's talk about, um, I mean, your love for writing and books. <laughs> you are accomplished or to speak Not accomplished yet. <laughs> no, 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 no. Ah, you write better than me now. Ah, okay. I'm not showing you guys yet. But tell us about your efforts so far, too. Um, okay, we did one, we did the first one called uh, The Brands Arise. Okay. It's been ready for the past, you can believe, almost 10 years. We edited and edited and edited it. We wanted to sell it out outside the country. We got a publishing company. But they folded up. So it's still there. Yeah, we've done that. It's not me, me and my team in Astra. But the other one is the Charles Sutter Personal Brand Guide, the Volume 1, which we did, we did self publishing. And we also sold out a lot on e, the e version. So we improved on it and we have the second one, Charles Sutter uh, Personal Brand Guide, Volume 2.0. But what we are doing on the 10th of June is unveiling the Charles Sutter Personal Brand Guide, the three volumes in one Volume 1, Volume 2, and Volume 3 at the, at the uh, COBM CO4 in Rwanda. So I'm very the three of them. So accomplishment, I write. I write on my page on Instagram. I write on the, very soon. I've also put on my books, all my write-ups on, um, is a, gone, I've digitalized them. So, but I've, I'm not, I've not had enough time to write the way I want to write because it's just too much to do. With all these young talks behind us, chasing us for all my people, you know. So I'm not say I'm an, an accomplished writer. I write, but I'm not where I want to be yet. Your corporate and personal brands have made a notable mark in the branding industry. Uh, what major factor has been the, has been the driving force of your success? Am I even successful? Success is a, you know, success is continual. Okay, but it's relative also. The only driving force is consistency. Discipline, consistency. Those two words work for me. There are some places you can never find me. There are some events you would never ever see Charles to do. No matter who is involved, because I have to be selfish and protect the brand. So discipline and consistency has worked for me. Those are the two driving forces that brought me this far and kept me still be a bit, not very relevant, but still more relevant in the industry, in the markets. Let's talk about um, your advice for anyone intending to start a career mm -hmm. in branding today. First of all, you need to identify a mentor that has done it well. Identify a mentor, not the one that will tell you what you want to hear. A mentor that will hit you hard when you need to be hit hard, and then identify a company where you can understudy. Go through a process of understanding case studies, brands have developed, spend at least four years there. Spend four years. These young people are too much in a hurry. To hold them down, they, don't, they are rolling stones that gather no moss. Within four years, you've changed your ten times. No. We stayed in certain places for four or five years. We stayed and we learned from the best and the masters. So, my advice is. If you want to go into branding, first of all, get a degree. Whatever the degree is, it doesn't matter. But if it's mass come, it gives a basis. But also, look for a mentor in that sector. Get a relationship started with a person from afar, and then get into one of the most the prominent brand consulting firms in the country. Get a job there as an intern. Start, no matter where you are, if an MBA student, 
start as an, as an intern. Learn the ropes and be patient. With time, you fly. But first of all, be patient to understand that branding is a process. Yes. And then it starts with your knowledge. Knowledge is ongoing. And you cannot be too, too in a hurry to become a master. That's why a master spends 20 years, 25 years in the field in the same lane. Don't be in a hurry. Work hard and trust God.